Hello, everyone. Welcome to this, I don't want to say special, but fancy episode of the podcast. Look at this. What a nice, what a, nice. look at our new set. This is the weirdest dumpster I've ever seen. We borrow, we borrow, we're borrowing a set. That's why it looks so nice. If we did they it have ourselves. Like, they have like sound mm. absorbing panels. This actually is the, embarrassing The trash does that for us. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to Look at I've, those dials. Now that's how you decorate yeah. a podcast room. Oh, man. All those panel meters. I bet you one of those dials costs more than our entire podcast set. <laughs> All right. Today on this special special episode of the podcast, we will be giving you Sigma male advice because <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why Peter's here. <laughs> Wait, what is what I actually what what is what is Sigma male? I, I only know meme stuff about it. I actually don't know what a Sigma male is supposed to be. I thought it was just. I think it's just some edgy cringe cringe lord Sigma stuff. Some kids look it it's up. Here's in, here's what you do. Number one, you male? don't eat breakfast because. It That's takes it's uh, it's bad for productivity. It takes too much time. You could be on the stock yeah. market making money instead of drinking that fancy la- Sigma latte. Male, like Sigma like a letter male. in the mail. The it's... grind, yeah, Sigma male grind set. Men who identify like Wolf of Wall Sigma Street guy enjoy their own company. Does it say anything about breakfast? It says they don't conform to societal norms. That kind of could be breakfast. Yeah, yeah. breakfast. Cold, definitely. Uh, cold showers, though. They they, they save their breakfast time for cold showers. Honorable, charismatic. Man. That doesn't sound so bad. What's the meme? Uh, I don't know. I've just seen Sigma male memes. It's like it's, it's like some kind of like it's the meme. The meme is yeah. the people who take yeah. it seriously. Yeah, they take it too is, seriously. Is Sigma higher than Alpha? Alpha is there a very popular <laughs> See, now we're getting male to that cringe territory. Sociosexual <laughs> hierarchy. While no, you're Sigmas all weird. Don't just have deal a fixed with it. No, no, this is the, the good part. The like philosophy. Dude, this sounds like star signs. It Alphas is. It is more extroverted. It's like actually star signs for guys. It's astrology. It's like oh, sigma male, alpha well, I male. I lost, lost a lot of respect for alpha males. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the they're sigma Pisces. Sigma male fall in love. What is this? <laughs> Look up like who is a sigma male. How rare is a sigma male? Okay, sigma the rarest. Male. What about an omega male? What's an okay, omega sigma male? male? Sigma male celebrities. Theta male. 13 <laughs> famous Theta sigma male. males. James Which one are you, Kevin? I don't understand any of this. What a weird article to write. You, <laughs> you know, what? I don't think anybody actually wrote it. It was probably just chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, wait, we should introduce our guest. <laughs> it's all right. No, this is how we do it. <laughs> uh, what kind of male are you? Uh, I don't know my Greek alphabet so okay. well. Um, I'm first class. I'm a pie male. Okay. I'm three day. <laughs> Ooh, uh, overnight, I'm but overnight only ground. Yeah, overnight ground. It comes later in the I'm day. I'm <laughs> a, has, a has, some sort of hazard. What do they call that when you airmail and like when I got my helium tanks, they wouldn't air ship it. Oh, oh, uh, uh, or or something. Hazardous material. Hazardous material. Yeah, yeah I'm a hazardous <laughs> material <laughs> male. <laughs> Media uh, mail, just nice and slow and heavy. Yeah, flat rate. <laughs> We're this is a uh, we're, we're kind of finding ourselves in a little bit of like a, a Gru minion situation. Um, you're you're sort of a evil henchman. That's how you describe yourself. Yeah, that's what my business card at, says. At, but not so NHRL is where we're at right now. Yeah, we're at the uh, robot yeah. fighting we're league. In Connecticut. Welcome. We were told National we'd be in New York, but Havoc. then we actually ended up in Connecticut. That's how we robot get you. League? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool we, New York. We trick like, everyone. <laughs> you get to fly in through New York. That's true, and then immediately leave. Yeah, on a lovely train ride through. Do you know how much our Uber costs? One hundred and sixty dollars. Dollars. Okay, yeah, that wow. sounds about right. I, I, I never seen an Uber. That's like, more expensive than uh, than LAX yeah. to your place. Yes. Wait, how and, long was the Uber? And it's closer, like it's an hour. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember looking at it, and I was oh. like, "So Michael and I, we did a red eye. So we left LA at like." 11 p.m. We yeah. landed here at like 7 a.m. Completely toasted, right? Because that's you should have slept, but then you, it's airplane sleep and you get like four hours. It's yeah. like a five and a half hour flight. And you're sitting at the airport and you're looking at this $200 Uber and you're like, I literally don't have any choice right now. Like, I actually <laughs> genuinely do not have, like, what am I going to, we're going to figure out how to use the public transit here for the first time to get like, uh, nope. <laughs> you're going to rent a car. You know you like, can't, no, nope. you're going to crash it. Like, like, nope. Not and then we four hours of sleep. Michael paid for it though. So. Okay. Sucker. Good deal. <laughs> you know, if he was on the podcast, the podcast could have paid for it. I know. I feel like we probably should pay him back. <laughs> we can pay him back if he comes on the next episode. So you so you are a uh, evil henchman to a billionaire. Yeah. Exactly. What do you put on your LinkedIn? Uh, I haven't updated it since I started working here. Would you actually put that? Uh, do they call yeah. you evil henchman? Like yeah, your... it's on my business card. That's how I get introduced. Is that, are we just going to refer to you this whole time as the evil uh, henchman, evil henchman? Henchman. I mean, you can call me Sam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Our guest name I'll is also Sam. to whatever. Okay. 
Um, just not a minion. That's below henchman. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Here don't know. it which, is. Which, Here which it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, minion's a lower title. Even like like a Gru minion, but minions are kind of the henchmen of Gru. Yeah, I'm not. I but don't which know. One? The are you lore the tall one? Are you the one eyed one? I'm Kevin. I don't, I don't know any of the. the I'm the sexy names. minion. <laughs> if I was a minion. No, that's Kevin. That's me. Uh, not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Say banana. Banana? Mm, it's wrong. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> that, that's right. You got it. <laughs> Minion material. <though>. Yeah. <laughs> so you, um, this is like actually insane. Like, uh, yeah. Um. So, like, so the guy that started this uh, in HRL, he was just kind of like a hobby of his, I guess. Like he made a bunch. He had a bunch of money, and then he's like, fighting robots are cool, and started it. And then I don't even well, think he, I. What I've heard is that, um. God, you know, we can cut anything out that we're not supposed to talk about. Um, I heard that he, so he, he, he started a very successful company. Yeah. He, he lucked out with it, but it was very successful. I, I, mean, I didn't say, I didn't say, <laughs> yeah. I just said he started a very successful company, made a bunch of money and then wanted to do things. Yeah. And it's like, well, what do you do? We've, what, we've kind of whatever had some you weird want. conversations about this before, but like, yeah. what would you do if you had a bunch of money? And I think most of us don't, you know, we kind of have an idea, but like, you don't really know. Like, it's kind of weird to to like try to think about what you would do. And he decided to start more companies, yeah, including NHRL, yeah, um, including. But why? Like, I think I was told that like like someone that he was friends with who did BattleBots that I know, who was like, oh, you, this this robot stuff is pretty cool. He got introduced to the sport. Yeah. Saw what it was and thought he could do it better. Yeah. Started NHRL. And then realized that it's hard. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is hard. It's ex- extremely hard. Yeah. It's not lucrative. Yeah. Um, but right now it's it it's bigger than it's ever been. Right. Like we're on the grow. The events are getting more and more well attended. We're like we right. have to have caps on the amount of robots that come and fight. Mm, yeah. So it, it's working kind of reminds me of open sauce yeah there's definitely a lot of parallels uh um, on paper we're for profit but in the spreadsheet we're non profit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly uh, yeah but yeah. you don't get any of the fancy tax breaks it's <laughs> yeah. not that kind of non profit <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, not profit <laughs> dude oh man I, I i've learned a lot in the past year and so i kind of you know i look at stuff like nhrl which what stands for the national havoc robot league Okay, it's sort of a long. Yeah, but I mean, it works. What else would it be? Um, HR BattleBots, anyway. maybe. Oh, definitely not. That's its own brand. Mm, that's bot like battles. A, a, so that's its own thing. Like so many of the robot bot wars taken as well. Dang. But is the, is the goal to like kill BattleBots or like just do something wildly different than them? No, no. like okay. we're. Because I'm still a little like confused. Like coming into this is like NHR seems just coming out of nowhere, and it's like wild doing like wildly well on social media because like. I keep seeing a bunch of shorts for like NHRL stuff in my feed, which is kind of funny. So BattleBots mm-hmm. started in like yeah. the, the late 90s. Mm-hmm. It grew out of like American Robot Wars, started in San Francisco. And when it was on TV, it, it popped off. It blew up. It got in front of a bunch of eyes. And then all over the country, all over the world, people wanted to do it. But yeah. BattleBots are big. They're, There's like two exclusive. They're 200, 200 plus pounds. pounds. Mm-hmm. Back then, oh, yeah. expensive, heavy. Yeah, it dangerous. seems like the bar to entry for that is yeah. very high. Like it's difficult to get yeah. into that. And so the sport of robot combat has been around since then, and like really local at the the smaller scale. So like mm-hmm. the robots we're doing are three pounds, twelve pounds, and thirty pounds versus the the two fifty at BattleBots. And what that does is it means you can build them in your apartment, you can build them yeah. in your garage, you can build them with your friends from school, and they're cheap. They're they're so much. They cheaper. can be. They, I mean, they can be cheap. <laughs> how much money does a fighting robot cost? Which Ours one? Costs how big? Like, I mean, they're definitely it's it exponential per dogs. pound. I mean, ours. Well, we didn't. I, okay, if we actually paid for ours, it probably cost like four hundred, mm, maybe a thousand bucks. But Aaron, our chassis was reusing actual battle bots, like motor drives, and so like that. The oh, they were. That, I thought those were uh, uh like hoverboard wheels those are from a 250 pound battle bot oh that's why we mm. totally that smashed is why <laughs> you yeah. really did. like we were driving with a robot like a, a quarter of the weight of what that drivetrain was built oh, that's for. why the wheels are just spinning yeah they're okay. the drivetrain's so indestructible power. yeah um yeah so it was small 
Yeah. The robots are smaller. That makes it more accessible for folks. So there's like pockets all over the states. Um, there's like a Northeast contingency. They hold competitions at motor shows and mm. at museums. On the West Coast, they, they're doing so many competitions in parking lots and all sorts yeah. of venues, like uh, hobby shows and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's, that's actually like really smart because like, like from for me, like I came from like flight tests, which is like that, you know, model airplane thing. Because model airplanes used to be like very inaccessible. It was like very, oh, yeah. you had to build out of balsa wood. It was like old stuff. guys only. It was always just a bunch of old boomer dudes that were yeah. just not fun to be around. They had like wood shops. Yeah. And, and I would dude, airplane yeah. boomers are uh -huh. so <laughs> bad. Yeah. Now we have like foam airplanes that you can build, you know, with your kids like at home, which is foam and some hot glue. And yeah. you can go fly them. I and funny enough, like you can make them from stuff at yeah. the dollar store. And you can like crash them into each other and just like rebuild them again. It's like battle bots yeah. in the air. Yeah. So it's actually a lot of fun. That so way. the so general term is like combat robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they're the name brands are like Battle Bots, Robot Wars, NHRL, um, Robotica. Robotica. That, is that still a thing? Is an old uh, one? That's the show know. was Robotica, but now there's a competition in Texas called Robotica, mm. unrelated to the old show on TLC. Because when I was a kid, like those were my favorite shows. It was the, like robot, uh, you know, robot fighting, junkyard war, junkyard yeah. war, yeah, monster garage, monster garage, and Jesse James has done it again. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? Remember the the hovercraft DeLorean where the, 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 he was so mad at them. I don't remember that one. They like were supposed to build a hovercraft out of a DeLorean because they would do crazy. You remember that show? They would. No, I never saw that. They one. would do um, like let's make uh, we're gonna take this Honda Civic and turn it into a trash truck, and they would like. You know, I mean, looking at back at it now, it's all kind of shitty. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like, like shitty, those. not it's in a way like that we would do. Thing. Like, I feel like yeah. we, it's a lot of work to turn a mm -hmm. Honda Civic. It is. And they've got to like churn out those yeah. episodes every week. Some of them were bangers. And then sometimes the, the guys that came in, either they were like presented too difficult of a prompt or maybe they just weren't as good as the, you know, the previous episodes people. Because it was like a different crew every time. <laughs> okay. Oh, it was. It was sort oh, of like I a reality oh, thing, okay. kind of. Yeah, it was really uh, weird. Like, it would be so interesting to see those shot for a YouTube audience and how. Yeah, it is. I don't how think you can do stuff like that anymore. People, yeah. they need like their people's attention span. They need like a sort of delivery yeah. really quickly, um, and so they'll just go watch something else. But you I, remember when you couldn't just fast forward through a show yeah. to the part where you that you wanted to see? I know, I know. So much fluff. In you had to shows. watch, yeah. you know, uh -huh. all the ads, fake drama. Watching fake that drama. stuff nowadays is like almost impossible. Yeah, like trying to watch an old MythBusters episode yep. from, from start to end. You pay like sixty to hundred dollars a month for cable too. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. And you still had you still had to watch it. So now like, yeah, commercials and even cost more money than that. But nowadays, you just all you got to do is you know pay twenty bucks Pirate for YouTube Bay. Premium. People <laughs> don't mean, know how good they YouTube have YouTube Premium. It. Yeah, you just skip through all the crap you don't want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> My entire channel. Well, did did you hear about how like everybody on PlayStation Discovery took all of their oh, all the shows that they rough. bought yeah. and like removed it from their their own libraries and they bought the. The shows really yeah, like old yeah. mythbusters everything like they're that. gone gone and the, the crazy thing is they're not refunding you for those costs that you spent what yeah it's because they it's only amazing. they sell yeah. you a license to watch the show they don't show you yeah but they don't sell you like an actual digital copy no uh, that's a that's it's, it's kind of like yeah. a crime honestly i'm kind of dumb with sony i bought a steam deck for like gaming because sony released that playstation handheld thing yeah. which isn't even really a standalone system it's a streaming remote play device i'm like this is oh dumb. okay okay so I just bought a Steam Deck and it was awesome. So off topic, but yeah. So I, I when I was a kid, those were like my favorite shows to look forward to. Yeah. And I ended up like way deeper, like once I, you know, kind of grew up and like late teenager and young adult, I like became way like deeply embedded in actual BattleBot. Yeah. And so sort of seeing a show as a kid and then being involved with the people that make the show and then being a part of the show was like a weird experience because you start to sort of like, you know, you know, you, you kind of just a it, lot happened, about it. it just happened like on accident too, it, right? Totally on accident. Like you just, you went to, you yeah. got a job and then like turns out all the guys yeah. there got a job worked there. at Half the people that worked there had been on the original show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when the show got rebooted, they needed, you know, they were like pulling people to, yeah. to help with some of the stuff, you know, internally. And uh, and I I did it. Yeah. Who, where where was that? Where were you? It was called there? Applied Minds. And what team? Uh, there, Yasha with? Little, oh, the judge. Dude, the judge is my favorite robot. Yeah, really. Yes. It was. The, it literally was sitting under his desk oh, with the <laughs> the Kevlar armor yeah, version. Yeah, I think I can't remember exactly. I think he he's had made a few a different versions, robots. but oh. and there's Pete Abrahamson. Okay. Uh, he had Ronan. Ronan. Yeah. Um. Then Luke Conlan. Uh. Um. Then there was uh, 
Oh my God, I can't remember half these names. Uh, what, what's the? Did you know the guy that did Blip? The the one with the the flywheel that would jam into the. That's Aaron. Okay. That's who built our chassis. <laughs> oh, oh, is it? That was that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, cool, uh, Christian huh? Carlsberg. Yeah. Uh huh. He did. Well, I can't remember his name. Like, Minotaur. He, no, yeah. he, he it was he, he had uh, like a knife on it, and it would like, overkill. Flip, overkill. Yeah. I think. Um, who Joe else? Fisher, maybe? Uh, I mean that. Those are the big names. Yeah, like, that, those. I think that's that's what I can remember right now. And then Erica's is like, I've seen so many of these robots, I can't keep track of it all. And <laughs> then, um, and then one of my like like in the new seasons and Chomp mm -hmm. was built basically at mm -hmm. my job. Yeah. Um, like the Crusher Chomp. Yeah, Crusher Chomp, all of them. Yeah, and the Hammer and Chomp. the Hammer Chomp. Yeah. Yeah, seeing Chomp. At open sauce was yeah. a delight. Walking chunk. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's cool, right? So cool and so complicated yeah. and so expensive. Yeah. yeah. Like, yep. Amazing. How does Chomp work? Uh, the, which one? Uh, the one that you're talking it's about. It's a pneumatic, pneumatic walker. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, that's the walker yeah, one. Yeah. It looks oh, like a big okay. hex bug, like a big spider. That's robot. that. Yeah. Wow. And it uses these super fancy pneumatic valves that like they can variably control the pressure inside. So it's like a control loop. And so instead of just like on and off, they can like control. Oh, like how much yeah. it can cut. It so you can like right. actuate them it's more not like, like a dun, motor. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. Like it's still pretty choppy, but it's like it's a much more controllable method of doing it. Cool. Um, but it's, you know, like seeing the behind the scenes and like, you know, what the builders go through and then learning kind of like some of the politics and how the TV show, like, cause it's like, you know, it's, it's, I mean, you guys know this. It's like when you're making a TV show about a competition, yeah it's sort of like TV show first competition second. Yeah. And then that kind of causes, you know, some politics and problems. It, it and, certainly does. And there's like a balance that you have to strike. Are you moving the camera? Cause... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's probably Austin checking in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, well, I have a that's question for you guys. <laughs> your boss be. is spying on you? <laughs> no, you thought you were being sneaky? <laughs> are, are you spying on us? No. It's shaking. No. No, I'm just, checking, I'm just checking outside. I'm just seeing what the weather's like. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, the light turned off. No, it's over there. Oh, that one's ah. on. There's a ghost in the machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got ptz's just hanging those out are cool. you know those are, are those the same ones that you use no not down there not for the uh filming I you guys should put track. like a nerf gun those are, those on those are things sony's and, like remotely hack, like tune into your turns and then just shoot people randomly yes yeah you hear that just put mm -hmm. some nerf guns yeah on nerf there. guns on those things that's the next project <laughs> squirt, yeah squirt guns <laughs> <laughs> full of gas oh yeah they have those ones that shoot the squirts and bursts yeah. like the laminar flow <laughs> squirt <laughs> guns <laughs> yeah yeah we have those i saw those downstairs. oh yeah oh, oh, yeah, really the, the yeah ones, no yeah the meme the, from the video yeah like the online yeah, viral marketing like a dozen or so I, yeah i, I, I thought i would play with one of those things i'm gonna play with one yeah yeah the one you put it in like a bucket of water and it sucks the water up yeah yeah it's got an ammo count on it. Man, I need those on my boat. When I when I when that thing's launched, I want to have like water battles on my boat. <laughs> you could just get like a whole fire water cannon. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, water yeah. Uh, water monitor kind of cannon. Yeah, yeah, that thing. Wait, fun. but I had a battle bots question for you guys. If mm. you had to be trapped what, in a room with a battle bot, what would be your least favorite <laughs> battle bot to be trapped in a room Tombstone. with? Tombstone. Yeah. Any any of the spinners because like the side the horizontal spinners any, yeah anything that like sticks out from the side because you just you can't really do anything and they can pivot so quickly so you can't just jump over it if it's yeah. coming at you yeah you, you could jump over tombstone it. and oh, he would just okay. like he would whip around in half a second oh just like throw you off yeah, of and it? You're, you know, just, your legs would freaking explode off wait of the so wall. you're mm -hmm. you're picking tombstone for the easy death right tombstone no no that it. would be like the the worst one to be trapped in the room oh with. worst yeah. one oh the worst yeah. one okay I thought you said the best one to be trapped in the room uh. Oh, there's one called Ginsu, which is like saw blade wheels. Mm -hmm. Saw blade wheels. Saws in the front, <laughs> saws in the back. It's just all saws. I think Trey built that, right? I think so. Yeah. That that could be terrifying. That's an old one. That's really like old. OG. I don't know. Yeah. Any of those, yeah, Tombstone, definitely the top. But like any of those drum spinners would be a bad one because even if you can like hang on to the side of the arena, if those things like jam themselves against the wall and flip up in the air. You got the, those flying. Well, you saw the sheer, flipper like, one no, last night. It could terrible. flip up to the top of the. Yeah. Uh, you know, like throw so something violent. up to the top of the. So there was there was one to the incident. roof, or if it flipped over, it could like flip itself up to the top. 
There, I there there was like so I basically what I did at BattleBots was like safety inspection. Cool. Which is I still feel <laughs> like you know it's like you're just a guy. He's at, a hall monitor. Jiffy Lube doing oil changes. Yeah, the, the orange. Yeah. Strap. yeah. No. Yeah. The robot police. Yeah. Yeah. People sort of hated. You had a clipboard. Yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. Perfect. And the job was to basically like you know look at what they did kind of go through the rule set and just just like you know you're like you look at it and you're like does this look really bad <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah like, you know you're just like because like, everyone's like sleep deprived oh, and, absolutely there's deadlines yeah <laughs> and back in the day like when you know crystal radios were the the norm like you know when you go to an airfield rc airfield back in the day they have your little flags so you have to put your flag or some sort of marker on your frequency because guess what happens when two people go out with the same frequency Mm, somebody will take use the same crystal as you now imagine Mm -hmm. your 250 pound robots with spinning weapons you have your wires you're testing it in the pits and someone else is using a different frequency oh like on the other side of the building Mm. and that has happened in the past has that happened during like competitions like sabotage that way no not sabotage Mm -hmm. i I think competitors generally are they're there they're not there to win i think the sport is more important Mm -hmm. to them than winning okay yeah and so they're not going to purposely do anything bad it's a very it's i honestly think because that happens it has happened at airfields like in the oh, old sabotage, days, yeah. yeah, like shooting people's planes down. Like, some, oh, really? like you'll have some angry Karen like living uh, near the airfield and hates the airplane ooh. noises, and literally starts popping in crystals left and right to the shoot down airplanes. That's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> a little um, bit harder to do now. There's they, been incidents, I think, like way back yeah. in the day, where you know they were testing their drivetrain on the bench, or they were doing something, and then someone else was controlling mm-hmm. something, and it like someone else's robot drove off the bench. Um, and so the you know there's rules about like the wheels Rut-ruh. have to be propped up, like you know make yep. sure that your wheels are blocked up, make sure this or that, and. You know, it's like it's all sort of common sense stuff. And most of it, you know, because people would always fight, you know, like, I, you know, got in a fight with Ray Billings of Tombstone because you're supposed to have your, you know, your positive weapon lock. And so you want to have like a pin going from your frame through your spinning weapon. So it can't start. So, it so, can't can't start. so it's like the motor turns on, but the motor's not strong enough to shear the pin that you've got in there. Um, you know, and, and he had a pin on one side, so there was no hole in the blade or anything, mm-hmm. which is, you know, you don't want a hole in your tool steel mm-hmm. blade. And uh, the issue was is that if the blade was was flipped 180 degrees the other way, it had a whole so so it could do like like up. one whole rotation. It could do like before a half the, rotation, yeah. or maybe a full rotation. I don't know. It actually yeah. may Enough. have been like a full rotation. And so I asked him like, dude, would you stick your hand like next to the yeah. to the pin that's supposed to be locking it, and then turn the weapon on and hold it there? And let it do that full wind up, and he was like, "No." Then I'm like, "Just put a bungee cord on it. <laughs> yeah, like, just strap I was it." Literally, to the pin. a ratchet strap would fix yeah. that. Yeah, and it's like, does it matter? Mm-hmm. Probably not. But then, you know, there was one incident that I saw, and then all of a sudden, I just became. It was like I just didn't care at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, in one of the testing boxes, you know, these are like the I think they're like 15 or 12 by 12 by 12 or something mm-hmm. like that. They're like the size, I think, of kind of like the big arena for you guys. And okay. Yeah. 16 the, by 16. Yeah. Something. They, they throw, you know, the 250 pound, which they're massive. Like you don't know it unless you see it, but battle bots are massive. How big is your, the red one? 250 pounds. God, that thing is heavy. Yeah. And it's like impossible to pick yeah, up. And it like articulates yeah. in it's every horrible. direction. It like sags yeah. and flops, flops around yeah. uh-huh. when you try to lift it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was a full body spinner, which means the whole shell spins. The top was static, you know, the bottom is static, but there's like a ring around the outside Cronus? that spins. No, it was called Ringmaster. Something saw, like buzz saw or something. It looked mm-hmm. like a big, like uh, circular saw mm-hmm. blade. And they had their positive weapon lock, their pin that's supposed to be through the chassis and stop from spinning. Um, so there, it's in the box, and the guy goes in there with his, you know, p- key to power it on. So he like loosens, you know, the Allen wrench, which then, you know, connects the batteries physically. Yeah. So it's like a hard disconnect. Oh, yeah. They have to have that. And it's the weapon and drivetrain are separate. So you turn your drivetrain on first. So, you you know, you back off. It connects. You pull the key out. The drivetrain's on. You know, and and the remote is supposed to be sitting outside. Nobody's touching it. Because like even just one of these robots driving into you will break your leg. Absolutely. They made us do that here. You know, like we had to put all of our our controllers on the cart. Yeah. Whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle, yeah. battle bot, like the 250 pound robots are like way scarier. It's like a ride on lawnmower, basically. Like even if it oh, drove yeah. into you, like it would go over you, it would break bones. It's like you don't want to get They're hit. They're so bones. dense. They're mm-hmm. sharp. Yeah. Even no weapon at all, it'll still mess you up. Mm-hmm. Um. So then he turns the he you know takes his Allen key out, puts it in the weapon, uh, um, key and starts undoing that. And as it makes contact, 
the weapon starts like tick, 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 like the whole body uh -oh. starts, like, <laughs> and then the, the positive retaining pin lifts out. <laughs> Oh, because it's like it was like so, hitting the pin. And I like have vibrating. no idea how the pin was installed. Because this is the problem. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, safety inspections. Like you have a pin. Yeah. You just assume they did it because you can't reverse mm -hmm. engineer everything that they've done. You just kind of have to assume some level mm -hmm. of competence. It, the pin lifts out, and it starts spinning. And he's wow. standing right next to it. The drivetrain is powered on, and now the mm. weapon is on and spinning. And it's like, oh, what up? What other part of this robot's going to start moving around? Uh huh. And then he like he couldn't get past it. Because he was on the back, he was on he was away from the doors, so he was on the back wall, and the doors they kind of open uh, in, and so he oh so he it's like it's blocking, around it's blocking it because it was the in the exit. middle <laughs> yeah, and there's a whole guardrail around the the bottom, and I was screaming at him like get on the guardrail like get oh up, yeah get mm -hmm. get up, get on like, the get up <laughs> wait how, how big <laughs> is the box sitting there huh? how big is the box uh like sixteen by sixteen oh. And then the door okay. is like maybe eight feet. Was there like wide? something you'd grab onto mm -hmm. on the ceiling, or no. it was? It was uh -oh. No, but it was just it was like get up on the guardrail. Mm -hmm. yeah. The guardrail is sort of like the barrier just to keep the robots from hitting the the Lexan, the yeah. bulletproof glass, because it's like they're like an inch and a quarter thick, really expensive panels. Uh huh. I think Man, you almost made a human grand. smoothie. Uh, I mean, the, <laughs> so the robot never moved. Mm -hmm. So the drivetrain was, you know, it, it was functional. But like, you know, when when you see one thing go wrong, you just assume everything's gonna go wrong. And so it's like it's like just get out of the plane. Like just get out of the plane, get out of the plane. Because if the robot oh, yeah. comes, if it if the drivetrain starts, you know, going haywire and runs into you, yeah, um, you know, at least you'll have you'll be up and it'll hit the the metal like you know U channel. That's scary. I I didn't have any chill after that. that you, <laughs> then anytime people would fight back, I just like I don't give a shit. I've seen things. Could man. you imagine yeah. if our hot dog rotisserie turned on when they <laughs> <Yeah>. were? When... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem though. Is then, you have we did run into the cameraman at one yeah. point when we were building it, it but happens. we gave him fair warning. I'm like, let's hit the cameraman yeah. with it, <laughs> and then we we gently caressed his leg with some uh with some hot dogs and wiener. That's juice. a slippery slope though, because when you start having exceptions. And you don't stick to the rules really hard, which is why I know why you guys have the rules. Then you start ending up in situations where you're like, oh, it's probably maybe fine, or those guys did it, or this or that, and then you're just like, oh no, yeah. So it's it was it's like you know it was locked down at BattleBots, like the, it was strict. Like you, you know, any people you, you still fight people. You can't have anyone die. No, you can't. No, it it would end it for yeah, it everyone. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Insurance yeah. would be yeah. through the yep. roof. Yep. And it's already that was a yeah. super thing. high. Yeah. It's like if somebody died in one of my videos, uh uh, that would uh, not be good. It's bad. And so that's why uh as like combat robots are popping up all over yeah. the world and like the the arena technology yeah. is not necessarily up a to chain snuff like everywhere. Fence. Some yeah. chain like fence with if no ceiling. India yeah. India tech India combat yeah. robot yeah. league. So there, yeah. there's been some incidents elsewhere, but yeah, for the most part in the in the States, it's been yeah, it's been so far so good. Yeah, the safety protocols have worked. And you, you guys are dealing with much smaller robots too, so it's a much less smaller scary, robots, yeah. but a ton of people. Yeah, and we do it all in one day. So like BattleBots happens over the course of two, two weeks. weeks yeah. We are one de day with over yeah. two hundred robots. It's like insane. It's, yeah. it's it's a whole lot. Um, and so that's why we have eight different cages, and we're just right. We turn. So, how, so you know the 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 premise of NHRL was to you know do it to do it better it was like doing it better in terms of um, like just competition wise or making it more accessible or all the above mm -hmm. to make it more entertaining. So mm -hmm. so the rules at NHRL um, were different from what they've traditionally been for the past twenty plus years. We we've got rules in place to encourage. Uh, spectacles yeah so oh okay a, like a ton of these smaller robot competitions no flamethrowers they're they're mm -hmm. not set up for that they're yeah. happening it's a whole in liability yeah. middle schools and stuff yeah. um but we we are set up for it so oh yeah we've got flamethrowers mm -hmm. we've got we let people run liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. we've got the That's cool. Can of beans in our robots, like <laughs> and the hot dogs. <laughs> we've got hot dogs, which right. four pounds of all American beef and pork <laughs> and horse. I don't think yeah. BattleBots would let anybody do hot dogs. Yeah, nah. and that makes sense. You guys saw <laughs> the, the fucking <laughs> did, mess did you see the house spot afterwards? Yeah, the tires and like the 
perfect line. <laughs> somehow he like sucked dog. up a couple like full <laughs> hot dogs too in the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really do like the smaller weight limits because it encourages more creativity. As yeah. far oh, as yeah, like, definitely. it's a lot because it's so hard to invest that kind of money into like this big battle boss because yeah. those guys like it seems like people do kind of want to win. I guess, but <laughs> at that size you have to like this scope creep. Yeah, and it makes it kind of a nightmare. It's like, yeah. oh no, another horizontal spinner, another vertical spinner. When Ooh. I when I see the big battle bots, I'm like, wow, that would be you know fun to make but then i see the smaller ones and i'm like oh i could make that yeah. exactly like, and it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. when it gets obliterated yeah uh-huh because you spent like a couple hundred bucks on it and you just do something different next time mm-hmm. couple it's, hundred yeah. ish <laughs> I, you, I think you could you could totally build a robot here for less than 100 bucks you probably wouldn't win but you have a good time yeah and your robot yeah. would be dead and you would learn a lot yeah you'd spend more money on the next one probably right. yeah um i i i think um, is there because this thing I, you guys don't do it? I I think there, I feel like there's some sort of negativity towards this term, but ass bots. Yeah, you we, guys call it ass bots officially. I mean, not exactly, <laughs> but I know to what you're referring. Oh, are you talking about Tommy's bot with the butt on the bottom? <laughs> no, with the butt on the back of it. No, that's bots with asses. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Uh, ass bots are just like the, <laughs> the opposite of a tryhard robot. Something that you do, mm-hmm. they put hot dogs on. You build yeah. it pretty fast. Yeah, you use what's around. You're not ordering from McMaster, probably. Right. <laughs> it would be fun to create some other smaller divisions. Like here's the one day division where you literally put two teams in a room mm-hmm. and you have to build your robot in one day. There are some. Yeah. it's kind of like the egg drop things. challenge, but like with the you know a different style, like of junkyard that. wars or something. Yeah. You have to scrap all the old bots. Yeah. And there's a it. fine line between like like a good robot and an entertaining robot mm-hmm. and i think that's the trickiest part like i th- what i've seen from my in- involvement with all the combat robotic stuff is it's it's a very difficult if not impossible problem to solve because what the audience really likes you know what they like dude it's like the youtube video problem they like the explosions they yeah. like the robots getting destroyed yeah and they then like the, the twerking robots who, whose robot got destroyed what do they like <laughs> The robot to not get destroyed. <laughs> and so you end up in a situation where people try to make sure the robot doesn't get destroyed. And you end up with a block of steel with wheels, which is the wedge problem that BattleBots had, yeah. which I think is what killed the show. The first you like know, the, the whole the the meta just became yeah, like yeah. wedges. And yeah. then, you know, now you just end up with, you know, a bumper car mm-hmm. battle bot, like, like, you know, quarter or like half inch thick yeah. AR 500 yeah. plate. And then like, it's like, yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah, the robot's indestructible because it doesn't actually do anything other than, you know, bump just, into other people. Yeah. And that's that's why battle bots is so curated yeah. with the robots that they allow in because yep. they need to maintain they that knew, balance yeah. we don't we let require anyone, an active weapon we though. do require an active yeah. weapon so there's no Wedge just straight up wedges. Yeah. Nah. but uh, the active weapons that is i think what makes a robot exciting because you yeah. see this new weird thing you're like what does that do like uh-huh. you see the hot dog mm-hmm. robot and you're like what does that do and inevitably it, what it does is it sucks. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, it if you look fine. at a weapon and you don't know what it does or how it works, yeah. I guarantee it's going to suck. And then, you, and then you see the hot dog start spinning and then yeah. you're like, oh, okay, well, oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> well, it's going to be fun because it's, you, it's get be the, like, you get the other part of it, which is a destruction. But if every single slaps, fight slaps, was slaps, just slaps, a couple slaps. of robots sort of like just bumping yeah. into each other, even mm-hmm. if they had hot, you know, rotisserie hot dog. So there's like. It either has we to could be make like, it go a lot faster. We, could, we can make it go so fast the hot dogs just fly <laughs> off. It's I like told totally you should have. Yeah. Like, you should have directly <laughs> wired it to a brushless track. motor. It should have been direct drive brushless. That wait, way we wait. can achieve a thousand RPMs and launch these ding dongs across the arena. What if we have like two wheels like spinning like a baseball, like a baseball launcher picture? and then like a magazine of <laughs> hot dogs and it's like do 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 do. We could build that. And it's like the salt. <laughs> yeah. You know, it gets in the electronics and it corrodes yeah. everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's that's a yeah, great death idea. Death by atomizes the hot dog. <laughs> yeah. We do allow projectiles up to 150 miles per hour. Wait, so really? So that's that cool. Mind. Yeah. Well, you said you like spectacles, though. Like going back to the flamethrower thing, and like everybody at Open Sauce was like, "I liked." You know, all they could talk about is when the, the bot exploded <laughs> in like a six foot fireball. Like, that was so cool. I love that. explosion. <laughs> uh-huh. I wasn't even near the cage when it happened, and I I felt it. I was like, <laughs> "Oh God, I hope yeah. the cage is okay." And uh, <laughs> I hope other people are yeah, whatever. Yeah, I hope, <laughs> yeah. Like, I hope the cage is okay. <laughs> well, if the cage is okay, then the people are. Okay. Oh, okay. No, they know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. 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 I mean, it basically found its pressure relief valve because uh, those panels. Uh, yeah. The top, I mean, honestly, <laughs> the top popped up. Yeah. yeah. And. And That's that good, caused, yeah. uh, we got a lot of feedback on that. From who? Discord. Oh. You yeah. know, it's probably what? good what? that the top lifts up. I feel like that up. was gr- That's uh, exactly yeah, you what you, you want. You don't want a pressure vessel yeah. that exactly. blows up. If that, yeah. if that top didn't yeah. pop up whatever 
inch and a half. Yeah. It's coming out somewhere. I feel like the mm-hmm. Lexan would have yeah. blown out. The top almost should be hinged just in mm-hmm. case of that. Like, Maybe yeah, you so, should have some like really stick yeah. or thick steel grade up top. Just S- with, like, since then, yeah, yeah. just we, in case. We ran explosion tests yeah. in our cages over here. We like set up a rig to mm-hmm. to blow up cans of butane. Oh, that yeah. sounds cool. <laughs> it was a That's pretty fun. cool day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and our cages like failed. They really? failed after that. So we had to modify like our, the walls or the lid. The, the lid, like lifting off or breaking. Yeah. yeah, lifting off to a degree where it messed with all the electronics ah. that were stored up there. So we lowered our fuel limit for mm-hmm. the robots in that weight class we like totally redesigned the cage we added like um you should just do like shields like and a burst exhaust desk. Vents. so um it's got a ton of vents on top to just like flap over yeah yeah shoot yeah. the flames yeah. straight up yeah. yeah so it's like not near the people and since then uh, no. it's, it's been going great i, re- I remember something at battle bots <clears throat> this is actually like i built a stroboscope a long time ago like one of the first videos i did oh, yeah. and i knew what it was because i used one at battle bots and the there was a fight between not a fight but there was like an insurance problem where the insurance company they they wanted information about the bulletproof class because it's like you know okay let's imagine this you ha- you set you make a panel of bulletproof glass and you want to test it do you stand behind it only if do you? It, yeah, but like, why? Not I don't know. Because you could just shoot it and not stand behind it. It's honestly really funny you say this because I almost sent this in Discord, but this man was testing some bulletproof armor. Yeah. So he made his wife hold it and he shot it. It was like some 1920s. Oh footage. yeah, yeah. That should have been the other way around. <laughs> 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 no, nah, that's on yeah. par for the 1920s. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, my wife will hold this this demonstration of this bulletproof something. But which is insane. <laughs> Right, because you don't have to stand behind mm-hmm. it. Only, but also only, it's like, I only right. Sigma males right. test their yeah. own body armor. Only right. Sigma males if you're will to allow sell this it, though, behavior. You, you stand behind it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Marketing. Mm-hmm. And so with BattleBots, it's like you have this an inch and a quarter bulletproof, you know, like a sandwich of like acrylic and Lexan, and I, I think it's like three things in there, and it has to, do, you know, energy absorption and how the bullet breaks. It's like you want, yeah, like harder, you want to break softer, the bullet, and then you want to catch the bullet. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, it's like the insurance company, because you have to have insurance for all this stuff was, you know, like asking some sort of questions. And then somehow something like a speed limit was thought up of like the projectiles have to be traveling under a speed limit. And assuming that at some point, if the speed of the projectile, no matter the mass of the projectile is high enough, like weird things will happen and it can kind of like permeate through yeah. mm-hmm. the Same shield. With the, the spinning weapons. Yeah. yeah. So there was oh, an RPM requirement. On those? BattleBots does. Okay. Yeah. We, there was an RPM requirement, but then it's like, well, RPM doesn't define speed. So then we had to go through uh-huh, and like the, the angular speed yeah. of every freaking robot. And there's I, there's a video, there's I think two videos, one of testing uh, Minotaur. And so I'm like, you know, like 18 inches away from, oh, with it, the from the glass with a stroboscope yeah. to try because you okay. can't put a tachometer on it because oh. <laughs> you can't you can't go in there. And so you'd have to like either rig something. Oh, up. you have to do it from like outside the glass. So I did it from outside the glass with the stroboscope. And I got really good at doing it quickly because you have to like, you know, you, you have to double the frequency and you go up, you know, you keep doubling oh, it. Oh, okay. Until you get you can see like moving mirrors forwards or backwards. And yeah. Then you like dial. So you, you lock it, but then you get harmonics, right? So that if you double the, the pulse frequency, then all of a sudden you'll see everything doubled. Yeah. And I think you have to go down twice because if you do it, it's like if you have like two teeth, you'll see two teeth. For one of the harmonics. Uh, so you have to keep doubling and going up and down to make sure you're at the right speed. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and I did that for uh, Minotaur. We did, I mean, we did it for all of them. But that was like a whole, you know, just nightmare. I know they've done some other tests too where they had some teams go in there and had a, they put a panel in, in the arena. And they're just like, all right, hit it. Full yeah. speed. Oh, really? That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah, I know that they gave, that they well. gave someone like a bracket slot for doing it. Because they, they had gotten eliminated and they were like, you know, we'll let you back into this other bracket. But basically what we need you to do is just just hit this panel at full speed. Oh, like spun up completely. Like it might damage the bot it. they're worried about. Is that why it was yeah. like a risky thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. But they like they wanted to see what would happen. Dude, I, I want to see what would happen. I mean, it, you know, it gives you a lot of confidence in the panels. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the panels are strong. <laughs> they, they've done some tests and you're just like, okay, I, I believe in the panels. Yeah. yeah well, that- like, you know, how do you know? What do you do? You go to the data sheet and say, can this thing... It's know, like how they build bridges. They just have to keep driving heavier yeah. trucks over them until until something, until something yeah. bad happens yeah. and they rebuild the bridge. Yeah, nothing so they bad know. has happened yet. But they're also $1,000 a panel, so... Hmm. 
Can we talk about our fight? Sure, yeah. Because I want to know, how bad did you think we we were? We were a 50-pound bot, and they gave us a 3-pound bot to fight against. That was our the handicap. 5 pounds? <laughs> Yeah, the against the jet. I yeah. think so. Yeah, how? That yeah, was that like, one's about five pounds, and we weighed like thirty pounds. I have no idea how much we weighed. We didn't even weigh it. No, around that, probably. about at least yeah. four pounds. Of hot it might have been like your 40 platform pounds. was twenty, and then it was really whatever, hard to carry the robot for a so long time. So, your tell us about your robot. So, those are technically my boss's robots, the jet uh, ones. Uh, uh, it's like your boss's children, but they're kind of your children. Yeah, I. I they came out of my womb. Um, <laughs> but He's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check the PTZs. So glad they have the green light on them. <laughs> uh, but it's like a RC jet turbine. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a real jet engine, but yeah. smaller. Uh, it idles at like 50,000 RPM, runs on oh, it, like a diesel mix. How, what, what's the goal of the weapon? Uh, to the thrust to yeah. blow them away but that's a bad weapon because yeah. you Cause go then backwards you, i was wondering about <laughs> yeah. that last night like, i'm like it happened if, with if you the, turn it up do you just yeah there's a the i fought with the bigger version yesterday as well yeah. and i'd never fought with that guy before it's always boss man driving it yeah and i i was under them i was in a position to like torch them i sent it full throttle and just slam back into the wall <laughs> And and died. It was oh, so you oh, no. did that was spectacular. Yeah, uh, and I was that's... like, "Hit me, hit me, fix it!" And they hit the lipo, and it uh. <laughs> the lipo went up. Oh yeah, and oh my goodness! After a, a lipo fire in your robot, they oh, put you right. in a sand bucket. Yeah. They hit you with the CO two extinguisher. That's, that's it's not good for a jet engine. Like so, the jet engine. How much is the jet engine? Because I'm pretty sure people are going to wonder, like, what model turbines are you guys generally using? So for the five pounder, mm -hmm. it's a. They're all sweet win. Oh. Um, <laughs> and the five pounder was a sixty, mm -hmm. and then a two forty B in the. Oh god. In the thirty pounder. So, so I guess what is the replacement cost for the single turbine and the small one? Uh, that one's cheaper. I think it's like sixteen hundred okay. or something. So and you the can just yeah. replace the turbine three or four. No, you replace the whole engine because oh, like okay. you, yeah. you, your engine's toast when you do the sort of vapor. The, the, we destroy the turbine, right? Did yeah, we? that that one's cooked. Okay, oh. yeah, and you cause it to flame out too, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was uh, cool. Yeah, it it looked... was pressed against the wall, yeah. and see, that was actually one of the ways we were trying to think of like how to destroy, how to stop your bot was like I was thinking a giant plunger, and we have to sneak up behind you <laughs> and cut off the airflow <laughs> to the jet engine. Dude, it does not take much to destroy that <laughs> robot. It's it's. Like a three pound turbine and <laughs> 3D print. There's not even a lid on it. There's no lid, no armor on the tank, fully exposed apple juice. It's just <laughs> not good at all. Spicy apple juice. The 30 pounder is a, at least steel, but yeah. it has like 116th inch thick UHMW armor on top, and it fought a hammer robot that just perforated Bog. it. Yeah. What's Went the most right through the dangerous jet. robot you guys have seen here, or is there something so bad that you didn't let it fight? I, that's tough. Like, we've had robots spinning over 300 miles per hour. Yeah. Which is not ideal for Lexan right. integrity. We did we did have them smack it like, yeah. like they did. Um, but I think the least safe robots, the robots themselves are not necessarily unsafe. It's the, like, inexperience of the builders. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd say that. Yeah, that was one of the things I feel like with the safety inspection was it was almost like more of a psychological thing of of analyzing the builder and sort of seeing how sleep deprived they are and how competent you think they are. It's, can can it's, you name name drop someone? No. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was doing a job interview. Really, you sort of look at them. And you're like, we're, we're nervous about y'all, honestly. <laughs> I feel we're actually we're a lot less bad than people think we are. Yeah. Well, we know the whole risk management thing. Yeah. We, we yeah. push it as far as we're comfortable with. Yeah. And You've got I don't want to blow my hands off. Mm -hmm. we, oh, we I tested blew the my hands off too with fireworks. So yeah, that's another story. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, your yeah. face was yeah, there to save your one, hands. That was really bad. I've I've had some sketchy incidents mm -hmm. like in my past because yeah. I was an inexperienced builder back in the day as well. So like I built a pneumatic hammer robot and there's a lot of learning in your very mm -hmm. first pneumatics robot yeah and pneumatics are scary hydraulics are scary there was a couple of things at at BattleBots where i just would always refer if there was anything i saw that seemed kind of weird i'm just like i'd go to you know luke above me and i'd be like hey yeah. can you i don't want to i don't understand this you know and then they you know they'll do a good job trying to convince you that it's okay and you're like i don't know i'm gonna go get somebody else. <laughs> that's our job <laughs> yeah but dude I, I i built my very first hammer robot it was a 30 pounder four inch bore piston Ooh, um, nice. and all wood. Cause I had no weight right, for right. anything else for the frame. 
and just the I was posting my progress, posted the buffer tank I made from a soda stream bottle, and then the safety oh, people cool. started reaching out. You need a, a, a burst wild. valve. You need yeah. this and that, and um, they they were right to be scared, yeah. and I was just ignorant. I didn't know what to be scared of. Right. Until we started testing it. And yeah. then it was obvious. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was so like what was happening? The, the cylinder was exploding or? Um, I had a problem with the regulator letting through too much pressure. Oh, Like it had a Not O-ring regular. or a spring issue or something. Um, so it would do nothing until like it hit a certain point where you're like dialing in the pressure and then. <laughs> oh, okay. And hammer swings and hammer. when you're not expecting it. Yeah. But, See, that's what the physical lock is for. Yeah, yeah. But and you stay out of the plane. Mm-hmm. But we we definitely encourage all of our builders to safely test their robots. So they get shamed online if right, they don't. Right, right, and right. Shame is powerful. We tested the hot dog uh, rotisserie on my mouth before we we sent it into the <laughs> ring, so we knew it was safe. <laughs> so shame isn't that powerful. <laughs> oh yeah, the whole robot's drive train was powered up too. So one false move and you'd be in that. That that robot. The whole, like, <laughs> were, I think yeah. That the the worst part of ours was like I, you know, like eye damage, like a skewer hitting you in the eye. Yeah. Or potent like uh, getting your hand like a little bit wedged in the gear motor of the hot dog. I mean, that wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, because like, it would stop if one of the tines got like yeah. kinked off to the side. It wasn't powerful like, enough to, to, get to pull stitches, it through. But it's not gonna like rip your finger off. I I honestly probably be most scared of the drivetrain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would, for sure. yeah, like, like that would, if your finger got stuck in that, I think the hot dogs would absorb go. a lot of the energy if it yeah. hit you in the shin, but if it reversed into your shin, yeah. that would hurt. That would hurt. And I think if you got your finger in there, it could easily rip your finger off. Yes. <laughs> oh, for like, for the, like the main wheels? The main wheels. Yo, yeah, definitely. Um, the most dangerous thing I ever, the, the one robot I saw at BattleBots, I still think about today that it didn't get to fight. <laughs> it was called Helichopper. Oh yeah. That one's <laughs> infamous. And I... That's that's a pretty sick name. That's a really I, I don't yeah. I've never seen this robot described. You it. haven't seen Hella it. Okay. This, yeah. It's it's truly cursed, and mm-hmm. I really think that it it with flying colors mm-hmm. managed to do the get a rule named after you. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Excellent, excellent implementation. <laughs> it was a uh, full body spinner mm. with retractable tips, so the tips could be extended. Oh. So what it would do is it would spin mm-hmm. and it would slowly let out <laughs> oh. the weights and it had enough cable to do like a 12 foot diameter. <laughs> that is so, so imagine good. Imagine like, like, you know, like a medieval mace. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's three just, of like, them extending. in a 12 foot diameter. So like once it gets to the center of the, the ring, it's it's over. Yeah. It's what bad. are they like giant lighter steel weights they, or something? One was, I think the retractable ones were like just like kind of hammers, like sort of Thor mm-hmm. hammer things. That's so cool. And were then, they on like cables or chains? Uh, it was like a Kevlar cable. Okay. It was like this, I think it was like this yellow huh. fiber cable. So that was definitely breaking the tip speed rule. It was, I think that might have been what partially inspired the tip mm-hmm. speed thing. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but uh, we were testing it. And it, it's actually really kind of sad. Um, what happens if one of them comes off, then the whole thing's going to be off balance. And it's yeah. the robot kills itself. They had to put rags on them or something yeah, to prevent so, it from scratching. So they had just painted the arena floor mm-hmm. with the BattleBots logo. I think they painted the floor every single night. Okay. So like all the art on the floor, like That's the logo, work. had to get repainted because the robots during the day would, would mess it up. So they wanted them to put some sort of protective thing on the hammers so that they could spin it up like a testing it and then b testing to see like the tip speed like how fast is it spinning like how bad is this because like no one had ever dealt with anything like this before you know it's like you're looking at this they came up with a novel design and everyone's sitting there like this is like you know cursed cursed." truly cursed (laughs) but you don't just tell them no it's like you got to figure out an answer why so to protect the floor they put rags on it Mm mm-hmm Start spinning, rags bind up in the like rotation mechanism, sucked right in, which then like lights the like the, the motor. Something caught on fire, the lipos explode, the whole freaking thing burns to the ground. No, yeah. wait. So what did they they catch the uh, rags? The rags something that on they the ground put on the hammers. Okay. So they like they like put like taped you know towels to the hammers so that they but they like stuck to the body the or something. They probably came off, got sucked into the working, yeah. stalled mm-hmm. something out. Yeah. Oh, you know what's okay. most amazing about this? 
Hmm. Is when they built these robots, they tested them at home. Uh, yeah, not well, really. A lot. You'd be surprised. Oh, really? Like a lot of people don't test until they oh, get to okay. the. Or we're still sure. building I, it I could, all the way to resist. BattleBots. I'd be firing that thing up my backyard, like mowing the lawn. <laughs> mowing the lawn. Do, 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 I do. think I remember there being a video mm-hmm. of it being tested in a warehouse, and mm-hmm. I think there were people standing on a table or something to get out of the. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh-huh. That's That'll that's help. what I want to see. <laughs> that's exactly what <laughs> we encourage people not to do. They. Yeah. For legal well, purposes, you have to state that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You tell people to get their own like protective Lexan box, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 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 And we have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I don't know. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> Build smaller so you yeah. can that's have a little tiny that. box. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of like what Alex was doing. I did a thing when he was testing his giant Beyblade. He just had a camera in one room and it was yeah. like a cinder block while he was in the other yeah. room. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to see it uh-uh. the mm-hmm. first time you test it. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Hella chopper though. Yeah. First I, on so they made them shorten it. Different so they, levels. Yeah. I think they reduced the wingspan to like it was like six feet or something. And then it like then it exploded. And they like fixed it. It was a I it really sucked because they like it had this full ass. It would look so cool too. I think it was like red and like aluminum. Yeah. And then they just it got burned. And then I think they fixed it. And then it just then they did it. I've got to see some videos of that thing. That they sounds that's great. Hella chopper. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> Sad. I mean, the robot probably still exists. You could probably, you could probably find you could it. Could do a YouTube video with it. Video mowing my lawn with yeah. with the most dangerous battle bot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start up in your house. Bot. <laughs> I think they like the tip speed measurement though. I mean, it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles an hour. Like uh-huh. if it like fully got up to its max RPM and max diameter, it was like, it, it, I don't even. I think it was it might have been breaking the sound barrier. I don't remember. It was really bad. Mm. It was like really bad. Yeah. If it could do it, S- some of the little bots, even when they spin up, it's scary it's like the whole things you can hear this like vibration um, did you see this the uh, screeching one that's like a hockey puck that just spins in place you no probably would have I, I, heard saw, it. I think cthulhu is one that oh yeah. you could hear that one spinning up and that was scary that that's one that's pushing around 300 miles per hour yeah, yeah which wow. is fast yeah yeah it's cool uh, i think it's great <laughs> it's, i i you know it's like it's just you know I think the the hardest part is judging the people who are building them to when you find something that is a little scary. It's like, do you know what you're doing? Like, do you actually know what you're doing? Maybe. Maybe. Partially, probably. But then there's only one way to figure out how to know what you're doing. Does everybody have all their fingers? Are there some people that, like, just don't have fingers? Build battle bots? People have scars. Oh, okay. I got a question. What was the worst injury you've ever seen? Like, or... In the history of NHRL, <laughs> you want, I guess you don't have to answer that one. We like or in BattleBots, uh, bang up our yeah. hands, okay. building arenas and stuff. But like, yeah. it's it's not that bad. The okay. worst injuries come from overseas. Mm. Yeah, right, I've seen on YouTube, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's you're you're building yeah. stuff. Has anyone ever died from a BattleBot? Like, not probably. Yeah, like not NHRL, over, but like, I, I think uh-huh. that it has happened in in uh-huh. the worst incident I've seen. Yeah. They survived. Okay, really. Mm-hmm. Because I know people have died from model airplanes. It's it's happened. Yeah, Where they fly away and then you get impaled by one of them. Yeah, I I think my guess is like the likelihood of getting hurt probably comes from building the actual robot. Mm-hmm. Like if if you're you you know using a drill press, mm-hmm. like yeah, for metal shaving. I have a cut on the back of my hand yeah. from that from yesterday. Yeah. I I think that you're actually more likely to bleed from the tools used to build the uh-huh. robot than the robot itself. It's a sharp burr on a piece of sheet metal. Yeah. Cause like the it's pretty the the rules and the guidelines are pretty specific of like you know the robot can't you can't be testing it out in the open, you have to put it in the box you have to do this and you have all the test box and everything like they get, there's a lot of opportunities, um to do it the right way and so you end up just hurting yourself before you actually fight your robot. Yeah, I what, got those scars too. Like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Everybody every time you build yeah. something, I'm like, yeah, where did I, this I, come from? And angle grinder on my knuckle with uh, robots like the closer I grabbed a hot piece to, of metal after I welded it. The closer you get to that deadline, the more, the faster you're uh, going, the, the yeah. less faster, careful you are. Faster the injuries appear, is, and like your hands just get yeah. mangled. And then it gets worse <laughs> yep. as you go through the event too, because then people like you know aren't sleeping. They have to stay up all night to fix their robot. Like I remember some of the BattleBot nights. I was up till you know two in the morning. I remember there was one really bad night because I was only supposed to work the first week, and then they decided to extend me to the second week. And I go back to the hotel at like three in the morning and like my room hadn't been extended. <laughs> uh, Have you ever got yourself so to an airplane prop? Was, uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I've definitely heard myself with an airplane prop. You remember that? The, the, the gravy plane? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, what if we all kick the transmitter? Who, whose fingers we chop up? Yours? Mine. And it's, who? Someone had the remote. Tom had the yeah, remote? Yeah, yeah, Tom kicked the remote. That's Tom what it was. Kicked, yeah. Tom Stan kicked the remote. Well, honestly, that's like one of the small things. Like, yeah. It, the airplane props were really nice because we it, cut it by them. It did like a nice, yeah. like, spiraled potato. They're through. very oh. clean, so it healed very fast. Yeah. It's not very jagged or mangled. So Those are thicker than drone props, though. Eh, not too much. Yeah, so we, we had this airplane that Peter had built that had like a Ziploc bag that would un un like it would unzip and then gravy would come out. So he would fly over this table that we put in the middle of the <laughs> runway with our Thanksgiving dinner, and he had to dispense gravy. Yeah, the C section in the airplane. Yeah, yeah, it was like a fire. It was like one of the fire airplanes, like the what do they call those? The, the, yeah, the fire the dumpers. I, yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. The ones with the belly scoops. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, and then we were holding it for some reason. Did we have to throw it to take off, or what was the deal? I don't remember. We, I think the gravy was somewhat of, of an ordeal. Oh, we had to like yeah, load it, it was, and hold yes, it. So yeah. I think there was something where we had like people were holding the plane. Mm -hmm. Your Peter was holding the plane. The remote was on the ground, mm -hmm. and then Tom Stan kicked the remote on accident because you know you're we're you're yeah, sort of we're trying to do all kinds of shit. Yeah, and it's dark too. That's what it was. And it was yeah. getting dark, and then you know we're all trying to rush, and then the prop just like goes dunk, 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 and I think it kind of like pushed your finger like it almost sucked mm -hmm. your finger forward a little bit it's like every time well, it i slipped because like, the plane pulled itself forward because i rubber band those wings it on because it just uh, it was like perfect like sink sink mm -hmm. sink sink like it was like four <laughs> or six slices yeah where was Do you have that? a scar from it or no no i don't we just put a band-aid on it that's all we did right yeah we went to write it and covered it with yeah some, we're fine yeah and it's completely healed up it was great yeah <laughs> nothing you know <laughs> so silly little airplane accidents <laughs> that happens so uh, i never Think we really asked how did you come into your your hench hench how did you start working for your henchman hood yeah so i was uh working i was like running a farmer's market in baltimore i'd been fighting robots for 20 years i competed here in 21 and um i was on the discord and oh really the, the mm -hmm. founder grew <laughs> the founder grew uh <laughs> Posted a screenshot of a job description of a banana. That, that still had like the little red underline from a spelling error. He posted that in the Discord. <laughs> what well, um, word was spelled wrong? So did you correct his spelling? No, absolutely oh, it not. It was a salary. <laughs> no, this, is like, this is an engineering place. You think engineers give a shit about spelling? I sent an email, like two paragraphs mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. He responded the next morning, set up an interview, did another one. And then they said mm -hmm. yes. And I moved up here. And like, honestly... After fighting all these years and competing and seeing what the sport was, I had never imagined that it was a job opportunity. Like I was oh, gonna cool. work oh, this, in fighting robots. Doesn't make any sense. None of this. No, makes absolutely sense. not. <laughs> and so, um, my parents would be like, "You're still doing that and stuff." <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's not a phase. Robot and now, combat is my life. <laughs> like it, it is now. Mm -hmm. It is. So basically, this whole setup is your your boss, your the your evil overlord that you're a minion mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. uh, henchman. Henchman. Minions lower. How is oh, yeah, right. villain villain hood? Yeah. <laughs> you just are basically doing all the it sort of weird, interesting, intrusive thoughts that your boss has because your boss made a bunch of money and just sort of has ideas and can afford to fund them and do them. And one of them was NHRL. Exactly. Yeah. What yeah. other weird ideas has has he had that you've had to help him with? Um, he, I honestly, he's Jet got these bot. ideas, yeah. <laughs> but the only ones I have time for are like the NHRL mm. related ones. But he, he got into making a pair of giant googly eyes. He like really wanted to get the Guinness World Record for the largest. The Did they actually Google? Yeah, they Googled. They were on the side nice. of this building. He he got it. He got it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> So they had to come out and like verify it. Uh -huh. and, uh, cool. It's expensive. That's how I feel about YouTube sometimes. Like you figured out how to like do things that are interesting to you and make it your job because when somebody like has made it and they've got all the money they need for the rest of their life, they still do dumb shit like that. <laughs> wait, did they actually like, were they, did they actively Google or did, did wait I mean, they had the earthquake. opportunity to Google, but the, it's but, not like the building was moving. Okay. You should have put them on a building in California. <laughs> You're right. You could put like a, a little jet of air at the bottom so it like blasts the eye up and it like <laughs> oh little jet too. they were massive oh like yeah i would yeah oh, okay the pupils what's what's the myth? well tell him that there's jet engines you can put on there <laughs> i think he knows he bought all the jet engines oh uh, yeah <laughs> so there's this there's a guy named uh palmer lucky the guy who founded oculus mm -hmm. um we we visited 
He also makes fighting robots. <laughs> he, does he? Oh well. <laughs> His opponents oh. don't know they're fighting. It's like wep- Andrew's like a weapon. Like drones with C four on them to intercept yeah. stuff that shouldn't be flying near you. Uh you know, kind of similar story where it's like, you know, just young guy had a very successful company, you know, very successful. And then you've got a bunch of money and a bunch of ideas and you just start doing the weirdest stuff that nobody would in their right mind ever do because it was too expensive and took too much time but like nothing matters anymore exactly it's it honestly sometimes feels like money is not real yeah yeah no because it's not because it's like it's a lot the only thing like the only limit is time yeah and Mm -hmm. and that's a hard limit like we're always running into deadlines and stuff but the money part and and like Austin's world the is different than NHRL. Yeah. Like NHRL is a real company and yeah. has employees and is m- more than just what Austin mm-hmm. puts into it. Um, but yeah, he's also got a lot of other stuff going yeah, on. He's, he's got a zillion right. companies. I don't understand why he works as hard as he does. He 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 like created all the software for NHRL. Like from the graphics to our our button displays and stuff to just the lighting systems and everything. Cool. Does he sleep? What does he get? No. Up? What does he get? It, it, it's got to be sleep. It's got to be sleep. It's got to be sleep. You got rid of sleep because his personal hygiene is good That's and good. he has a sense of humor and he's probably funny because he never sleeps. I, mean, <laughs> I, I could do it. <laughs> Start saying things. Yeah. I don't know. Do people become funny or do they become violent? Uh, Fun. I it's mean, probably I like one or the other. If I don't sleep, I definitely start saying things. I would probably getting a little worse. loopy. Yeah, yeah. So we just went to the dollar store buying foam for Peter, and then Kevin found this. It's a Twinkies iced latte, Twinkies flavor. This so is what's wrong. With Instead you, of cream, they added in the the cream inside of Twinkies. It's just oil. That's gross. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I think. Yeah, yeah let it rip. It also says serve cold what over it, ice room, room in a martini glass. Yeah. Yeah. You it. it tastes good. I don't think you're supposed to shake that. No, you are. It says it shake just, well. It just blew all over the place. That's, how, that's, that's how you know it works. Oh, man. It smells super sweet. I'm curious. I think that like the Twinkie sweetness can be a little bit like oily or fake. Mm. You're going to waterfall it. I'll waterfall it. It's also... Yeah, it does actually taste... It's yeah. not... It's creamy. It's not like... It's like oily creamy. <laughs> it tastes more like a protein shake. Like a gross protein vanilla shake. I don't think it there's any like Twinkies. Coffee. There's not Twinkies yeah, that's a lie. in there. That, that's not Twinkies. It smells like a sort of vanilla. It's just like a French vanilla. It's got a Twinkie aftertaste. Really? Oh. Like the mouthfeel. It just tastes like a weird vanilla drink. From the oil. That's not good. It's not great. You think it's you... like LaCroix Twinkie coffee? I think the Twinkie is a stretch. Like they put, it's homeo- homeopathic Maybe Twinkie. kind of tastes like they the... put one Twinkie in like 10,000 gallons. You know the bread that's stuck to the, the paper of the Twinkie and you kind of like scrape it uh-huh. up? It's just <laughs> sort, of like, sort of a waxy, papery, vanilla-y. Nah, you know, if you made me drink that and pointed a gun to my head and said, guess what flavor it is, I don't think I'd pick Twinkie. Uh-huh. Well, no, I would say pull the, the trigger, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you'd rather taste lead. <laughs> the sweetness of lead. William, he died of lead poisoning. <laughs> he died doing what he loved doing, dying. <laughs> you going to finish it? Mm-hmm. Really? Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like it's I'm... like caramely, too. Yeah. I'm getting some caramel. Some kind of caramel. You degenerate. Not... Probably why it was at the Dollar Tree. So, the Dollar 25 tree. Uh, Are you guys... Updating your robot or what? What's the plan for I don't the know. rest of your fights? Okay, sort of. I figured we'd figure that out. Can you um, <laughs> can you define organic materials? Hot dogs. Oh, so we already broke that rule. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I can define they, liquids as wood. ketchup and woods organic material. Yeah, but we let it slide. So they can't stop us. What about We're unstoppable. I mean, we, <laughs> you can use bone. What about dried bully stick, bull penises, <gasps> like the dust? Oh yeah, yeah. Like honestly. We're not really holding y'all to the rules. Okay. Man, that, that, that ruins my dreams because yeah. I really wanted the taxidermied raccoon and I want to name the robot Roadkill. Well, because our fight isn't a... Re- we're not... We, <laughs> we, we can't win anyway. So. I have a sort of a policy <laughs> where if you bring it, we're probably not going to turn you away. <laughs> yeah. So we might have to help yeah, you Yes, taxidermied us, raccoon. We need this. It's, it's like an exhibition class, you right. know? It's just for fun. We're exhibitionists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you saw those hot dogs. <laughs> if you do something really bad... Mm-hmm. And your goal isn't to win, I think that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like as Generally. long as. Yeah. As long yeah. as it's not 
unsafe, you know? Right. It's got to be sporting. I feel exactly. like there, there's sort of this engineering thing that happens. This, like, scope and it pisses uh, me off yes. so much. I talk so much shit about it. Of, like, you know, BattleBots does this. The Power Wheel Racing does this, which is why when we did, you know, the open sauce, uh, Power Wheel's not drugs, is what we called it. Uh, you had to have some stock things, like the wheel and drivetrain had to be stock. Mm-hmm. Or no, I, th- I don't think, I think the motor could have been upgraded, but I think the wheels had to be stock. It's like you can put as much power as you want in the wheels. Good luck getting it to stick to the ground. People that do engineering tend to try to make things better and better and better and better and better and better and better yeah. and better. And then their feedback is winning. And so they try to win. And it's like you can have so much fun if your goal isn't to win. Like you can you've opened this whole new yeah. realm yeah, of yeah. fun. Speaking of that, yeah. too, it's like creative it's like, mode. Mine's like yeah. that creative that, that mode. Cat robot. Like the one that just kind of walks around. It's yeah. like that one's hilarious. Like it's yeah. doing so well because I always see it on social media. Uh-huh. People exactly. are like, look yeah. at this thing. It's ridiculous. Line. It's just like a creative drivetrain. Yeah. Like, and yeah. The, yeah. He's he still will win a fight mm-hmm. or two every yeah. once in a while, but that he, that's obviously not, not what he's going into for. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what does it's like a creative outlet yeah. for me and fighting robots is my art yeah and never have the goal of winning my goals are like to build something that's never been built before yeah yeah or to like put a finger on a butt themed robot yeah. or um just to like dance around the arena try and hit the ceiling right, with my own yeah. weapon that right. sort of thing Built like, a jumping robot that's like <laughs> side goals boing yeah because winning is just one yeah. thing and right. i get bored just doing too one thing too many people thing. have the goal to win the competition's too high like you can basically win without winning guaranteed by doing something weird and that's what's cool about what what we do is because you don't have to win to be like featured or right. to to become like our social media face or something right, like that right. you just have to be cool yeah. or mm-hmm. unique in yeah. some way yeah and that, that that's nice because we don't have to be curated. Like we let everyone fight and mm. the gems or whatever the cream rises or whatever. Right, Sometimes right. the cream is cat themed paw print robots. Right. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it's like f- fart themed flamethrower <laughs> robots and Tommy's butt robots. Yeah, uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it's hot dogs. <laughs> Sometimes it's hot dogs. <laughs> we know <what> we are. <laughs> and it's cool. There's ass still bots, a place for like bots. the engineers. No, it's Team Raw Dog. <laughs> I think I think ours is still too high effort for mm-hmm. Assbots. There's got to be something right in the middle. Like, Assbots, I feel like, is like they barely hold themselves together. Kind of. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. They're kind of a a bummer to watch fight. Till you want yeah. it to be cool, but there, it's like yes, that's, nothing. I, there needs. Oh, yeah, okay. I think that's like I think what we did is probably right right where it needs to be. Yes. Of like the drivetrain is indestructible and everything attached to it is garbage. <laughs> But it does yeah. something. It does something. It has some goal, <laughs> some purpose. It integrates well with your opponent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's, I think, kind of what, ha- you know, because we were, we were brainstorming. It's like, it's not how do we win? It was like, how do we make the fight entertaining the whole time? Yeah. And ha- ha- getting a one hit KO is not Mm-mm. interesting at all. Those are the worst fights. Yeah. So. That's why the jet robots are just so bad. Dude. Mm. <laughs> so we were yeah. trying to cook the hot dogs with a jet robot. That was like the thing. Was that what you were trying to do? Because you slammed the shit out well, of me. We, <laughs> we couldn't turn our rotisserie on and we were angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we talked going in about cooking. <laughs> yeah, but then you were over there and we were, then we were, we were over like, there yeah, over yeah. here. Our rotisserie is the only thing that makes our robot look like it does something. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, there was that no was active us controlling one wheel each. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was one. We were not wheel. driving. We I, were like we had to like in uh, tandem and, drive. And, and then Michael oh, was okay. between us. He was supposed to control the the spinner, yeah. like yeah. to make sure the Jaeger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Three brain connect, cells, yeah. one robot. We connected our wieners <laughs> together. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything you want to promote for NHRL or? Uh, we hold at least seven competitions a year. Um, right here in Connecticut. And in 2024, we're expanding throughout the States. So we're going to be holding competitions throughout the U.S. Um, you can see us on NHRL.io or on our YouTube. Is this Are coming up to- Thursday? So will the, there, there will be so there'll be a fight tomorrow evening. Yeah. Oh, so then they could, anybody watching this the day it was posted, could go and watch live on uh, NHRL's YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, link in the description if you want to find the the place to watch the last night of the big, the year-end. The Havoc All-Stars. The All-Stars. That's like the biggest competition you guys do, like the sort of... Oh, no. But Uh, I mean, this is like the invitational... This is the very first time we've ever done something like this, but we had our our championship 
in November. And um, that's probably our biggest one, the most yeah. money on the line, the most people in the audience. Somebody said that, I was talking to somebody here that's fighting, and they said these are like some of the best spots that you invited to compete. Yeah, mm. these are, are the ones that put on a good show. Yeah, um, okay. That are generally good people and um, just fun to watch. Nice. All right, well, thanks to everybody on Patreon who supports us. Your names are flying across the screen. I know you got mad at us because apparently last week they weren't across the screen and, and everybody threatened to abandon their membership. I don't believe you. Do you want Do you want to pick a name? Are we doing that? Do yeah. we? I would love <laughs> to eat one. I don't know if that gets done anymore. <laughs> I feel like we just say it and then nothing happens. Oh, yeah, no. No fancy. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, fancy. yeah. Not today. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a name and then nothing happens. The name just keeps going because we didn't have time to edit yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a battle bot's gonna come on the screen and just have, do nothing, not hit any Nothing's names. Gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for having us. Yo, thank you. It's a pleasure, and I'm honestly a Patreon of Safety Fair. Oh, yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, you should ask your boss for a raise. Yeah. Oh, Did I'm, you ask your boss for a raise? No, no, I haven't spoken with him in a while. <laughs> Give, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his name is Austin McCord. You can tell Austin. Him. Give 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 your boy a raise. Give your favorite minion, yellow minion, a raise. Now it's got to be Gru and Minion. Gru, <laughs> give this minion a raise. <laughs> Something other than bananas. And then you have to subscribe to the um the tithing tier on Patreon. Okay, if you get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> that's above Galaxy Brain or what? Uh, I don't think well, we have it. Yet. I don't think we have it yet, but it was, we should. Because <laughs> we we made a joke last. Yeah, anyone week. that gets the raise has to go to a <laughs> and give us ten percent of their no, raise. The next and year somebody could be Sigma actually brain. did. Somebody <laughs> did it. Sigma Brain. That could be the next okay. year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>